time of the rapture that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish that's the rapturable church and what's the purpose why will christ come at the time of the rapture and the dead in christ shall be raised incorruptible and then we which are alive will be caught up together with them to always be with the lord three things number one to remove his sanctified bride from the earth is to receive a story one to righteousness look at this number one to remove his sanctified bride from the earth look at luke chapter 21 in luke chapter 21 reading from verse 34 luke chapter 21 verse 34 and take heed to yourselves what do you call that well that's a command but that's also a warning he cautions us you see there are people they don't take any warning they don't take any caution and they don't make any preparation they say i'm saved i'm saved the lord is coming is coming for the church and whether the church is in the is in the valley or the church is on the mountain whether the church is in the light or the church is in darkness whether the church is in false doctrine or the church is in bible based doctrine it doesn't matter church is church and christ is coming for the church christ said no these are the very words of christ christ said take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of this life so that day come so that day come the day will come whether we're ready or not the day will come at the time of the flood only eight people were ready and the day eventually came and the flood came the day will come it says but you are to watch and you are to take care and you are to take heed so that day will not come upon you unawares in verse 35 it says for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth of the whole earth of the whole earth there are some people that say that you know the rapture when it takes place it will take place in those major cities that are well known it will take place everywhere the people who are in the air in the plane when the rapture comes it will affect them those who are on the road in their cars when the rapture comes it will affect them those who are on the sea it will affect them those who are in their homes in their houses it will affect them those who are working at the mill at the factory it will affect them all over the earth in the village in the town in the city that day will come upon many people and it will take them on earth all those who are dwelling living on the face of the whole earth in every country and then it says in verse 36 here is what is saying what she therefore what she therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass to escape all these things what are those things to escape the great tribulation when a war is going to come out against a particular country the people or the nation that is waging war with that country will evacuate their people the wrath of that country wants to fall on this country and they know that the ambassadors are there their own citizens are there so what they will do is to evacuate their people remove their people from that place before the war will come out the time of the tribulation is the time of wrath 
the wrath of God and the wrath of the Lamb. And that wrath of the Lamb is going to fall upon the earth. And the Lamb as a bride, the church, he is the husband, he is the head of the church, is going to take away, is going to remove his bride from the earth before that tribulation will take place. That's why it says, Jesus himself said, you watch and you pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That's the rapture. You escape the great tribulation and you stand before the Son of Man and he receives you before the great tribulation and he takes you up on high. We're told in First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, we're looking at it from verse 4. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4. In verse 4, it says, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day were not, were not of the night, nor of darkness. In verse 6, it says in verse 6, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. In verse 7, it says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunk in, are drunk in, in the night. Verse 8, it says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Why? Look at verse 9. In verse 9, For God has not appointed us to wrath, God has not appointed us to the wrath of the great tribulation, to the wrath of the almighty God, to the wrath of the Lamb. God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by the Lord Jesus. We will escape the great tribulation, will go in the rapture, the Lord will remove the sanctified bride from the earth before the great tribulation in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two here is to receive and take a separated bride to heaven. The bride that is separated. You know, if you are married, especially when you first get married, your bride or your spouse as had friends, maybe just normal friends, regular friends, but earthly friends, human friends of the same sex or a different of the opposite sex before you got married. Now you're married and the lady is excited about the marriage. This is the best thing that ever happened unto me. And because of that, she separates from all the other familiar friends that they could travel together without taking permission from anybody and they could get this done together they could plan together but now she separates from all that because she's now a bride a new bride separated you see there are people that do not understand that if you are a child of god and you are part of the bride of christ you must separate from the world. If you're still a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. The rapture is not for the enemies of God. Those who are not separated from the world. There are people that do not understand that they need to take their heart away from whoever was holding their heart before. If Satan held your heart before, 
if occult held your hand, heart before, if the world and society held your heart before, you're getting ready for the rapture, you withdraw, you'll take your heart away from the world. If your heart was in finance, your heart was in commerce, your heart was pursuing after the dust and the sand of the world before, and you are immersed in them, entrenched in them, now you know the Lord is coming, you will withdraw, you will win yourself away from all those things that were I tie you down because you are expecting Christ that is coming for the separated bride. You must be separated and set apart unto the Lord. And look at what the Lord is saying is to receive and take the church unto himself. Acts chapter 14, we're looking at verse 1. Acts chapter 14, reading from verse 1, sorry, it's John chapter 14, John chapter 14, reading from verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. All the things that are happening around us, and then some people are so troubled, they cannot come out, they cannot come to church, they cannot come to Bible study. I've decided, I'm not, once it is uh, six o'clock in the evening, I'm not going to come out because you know what is happening. I hear that story, I hear that story. They don't live their lives according to the Bible. They live their lives on the basis of story, story, story. I hear, I hear, they are not hearing from heaven, they are only hearing from the world. Those people that are not getting ready, let not your heart be troubled. The Lord is preparing you for the rapture. The Lord is not preparing you for kidnappers. I didn't hear the amen of my people. The Lord is not preparing you for, you know, difficult people. They're looking for people. He's not preparing you for the adversary. You will be alive and you will be healthy and you'll be protected. You will dwell in, under the shadow of the Almighty. A thousand before this side and ten thousand on that side, it will not come near you. I said it will not come near me near me it will not come near me no heart trouble no heart palpitation we're moving on to the day of rapture i'll be there i'm asking you i'll be there let not your heart be troubled believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions verse 2 if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. Tell me now, do you really believe, I'm talking to you now, you as an individual, do you really believe Christ has gone to prepare a place for you? Somebody is building a house for you. And that person building that house for you is thinking about you every moment. He puts this, puts that, puts that. And he happens to be a good doctor as well. And then you are sick and he's building the house for you. Will he allow you to die before the house is ready? He will heal you. He will deliver you. He will keep you happy. He'll keep you safe. That house is building for you. Nobody else will occupy that house. I go to prepare a place for you. Look at verse 3. It says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. That's the rapture. That's the rapture. I will come again and What's the next word there? What's the next word there? Receive you unto myself. That's the purpose of the rapture. He removes the bride from the earth. 
and then he receives the bride unto himself that where I am where I am where I am there you will be also will you be there I said will you be there are you very sure are you sure that Satan will not take you away before that time comes are you sure you will not backslide I will not backslide Christ is coming I will be ready I will be there you'll be there in Jesus name number one is to remove the sanctified bride from the earth number two is to receive and take the separated bride to heaven number three is to reward a steadfast bride for turning many unto righteousness you will work for the Lord I said you will work for the Lord and then when the Lord comes great will be your reward you will not only really reward those who are standing here or sitting here who are our pastors and ministers every one of you I'm talking to somebody there now I said every one of you I can't see my people I see every one of you where are you there where are you there you will receive your reward in Jesus name in Daniel Daniel chapter 12 we're looking at verse 3 Daniel chapter 12 I will read him from verse 3 and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament they that be wise are their wise believers here today I said are their wise children of God here today you are getting ready and you are keeping you are keeping in the work of the Lord they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars how long forever and ever your life will turn others to righteousness your language will turn others to righteousness your behavior will turn others to righteousness your encouragement your uplifting attitude will turn others to righteousness your evangelism will turn others to righteousness your doing good giving to people will turn others to righteousness and everything you do everything you say will have the purpose of turning others unto righteousness and i pray you will not be weary i pray you will not be tired i pray you will not backslide i pray you'll not be discouraged day by day you'll keep on doing good and your life will be bringing people into the kingdom of god and i will see you in heaven you will see me in heaven i'll see a crown on your head and i will see many stars in your crown because your reward will not fade and will not fail in Jesus' name. Where are you? Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I thank you. I'm not preparing for the great tribulation. You are preparing me for the rapture. You are preparing me for the coming of my Savior and the coming of my bridegroom. I need grace. I need strength. I need your spirit. Everything I need to make me ready. Give to me today. And then when I leave the service today, I will not leave the message on the seat and where I've been sitting. I'll take the message with me and I will live the way you want me to live ready for the coming of my Lord. Joy 
in the city. Joy in your life. Joy in your family. And joy everywhere in Jesus' name. It's a prophecy specifically for you this December 2022. If Jesus takes off his hand from upholding the earth, the stars, the moon, the sun, everything will collapse. But fret not. GCK Authority has announced the next level move. Christ comes and intervenes in your life. In the hospital there, you will not die. Christ, your great transformer, this December will lead you to triumph. Zoom into your December 2022. From the land of honor and integrity comes two-in-one GCK live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria. The Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for you. Young adults and professionals. Titled Recharge to Excel. December 27, 2022. At 0600 hours GMT. All broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi says, You'll praise God. You'll give your testimony. And more, as excellent worship comes from the USA with Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature.
In Jesus' name we pray. And the church of God said, God bless you. You can sit down. I promised you I was going to give the next message. I'm going to do it now. You can sit down. When God makes a promise, he fulfills it. When we make a promise, what should we do? He fulfill it. First Corinthians chapter 13. We're reading from verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak of the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not charity, I have not love, I am become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. As we look at the word of God,
will of God. That's what he wants. That's what he desires. That's what he demands. That's what he's looking for in your life. The moment you become a child of God and you're born again, he's confronting you with 